Well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be taking off here, but I wanna, okay. I wish you the best Thank with you. this upcoming uh, hearing or hearings. I can't imagine it's, it's like, you know, the, <laughs> the, the perpetual lawsuit that never ends, right? <laughs> Once you think it's over, there's another modification coming down the pipeline or there's another way that an attorney is going to get in there and say, well, we can go back and fight for some more. And I think that that I think in some instances, the attorneys that do this are also responsible for the destruction. I do. I believe that thoroughly. But also I too put some accountability on the parents mm -hmm. that allow themselves to be walked into a courtroom right. in this system and allow themselves to be subjected. Um, I do put accountability on the parents uh, in, in my experience in listening to some of the, the hearings um, about some of the most petty things and petty arguments yeah. um, that don't have to occur um, based upon uh, sentiment feelings about the other parent or the issues related to themselves. And so, um, you know, the other part of wanting to be a parent is is also on us. Um, you know, you hear about dads and moms that just walk away. They don't have any remorse. They just walk away. Yeah. I think some of our accountability is that we do have the capability of empathy. We do have the capability of sympathy. Yeah. We, which, which gets in the way, disables our ability to walk away. Yeah. So we want to be involved. And that's inherent of what we've learned in our only in our early development, plus somewhat genetic <clears throat> from generations and generations. So I think one of the things among parents that <clears throat> complain about the system is uh, they forget that part of themselves is also responsible. Yeah. I'm partly responsible for this. Yeah. I'm responsible for where I am right now because yeah. I have the capability of having empathy and sympathy and wanting to be involved with our our child. Right. Um, if I didn't, it would be easy to walk away. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So relating to the issue of parental accountability, um, uh, there is some responsibility to subjecting yourself to this. I would prefer not to. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I gotcha. But, but I also see though too that people say, well, these parents can't get along. And, and I think that that can be um, an incorrect analysis at times because it really only takes one parent to drag the other one into court. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's very can, unfair for the person that's trying to do what you're saying right, to that, be labeled and mis, mislabeled. Yeah. But I think a lot of parents walk into the situation with a certain amount of being naive mm -hmm. because you have this idealistic thought that, okay, the court system is unbiased, just, just and fair. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, um, and then you... And, and we all laugh certain, at such people because we all have those ideas. You start to learn that, no, that's not really the case. Yeah. Um, and that... Um, and some of it can occur in a disguise form as well, yeah. you know. Um, uh, and it relates to the issue of high conflict. And I think that even in my own hearings that I've experienced, you know, they like to identify high conflict because then it justifies uh, supporting the current possession schedule. Yeah. Which, you know, is incentivized yeah. uh, by. by the financial system. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So if we can keep these people high conflict, that keeps them in the situation they're in and keeps us in the situation we're in. Yeah. If it's not high conflict and they can get along, um, we can't have that because yeah. that could lead to equalized, maximized parenting time. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. And the, and the major obstacle to that are the parents. Yeah. You know, a parent, and we've already run across the case where that's not true because yeah. we had, a, you know, we've seen a case where both parents said, we don't want child support. And the OIGs tried to get in the way of that, yeah. you know, or the Attorney General's the Attorney Office General, tried yeah. to get in the way of yeah. that and uh, say, no, you know. We can't have this. We can't have this, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they wanted the money to come in. Yeah. You know, so where is the individual autonomy there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where is the fundamental rights yeah. there? To me, it seems to be almost discriminatory against divorced or never married parents in yeah. a sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's and uh, and I don't think it should be. I think yeah. that that's a that's a form of government discrimination. That's my perspective on it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but I think that you're right. I mean, and and if the judges are going to make orders for for divorced or never married parents to follow, why don't they give order to orders to married parents mm -hmm. who are having difficulties? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's even yeah, we know there. I mean, yeah. you know, there's family code that relates to non-discrimination for the children, regardless <laughs> of married or unmarried situations. Yeah, and we know there's family code 
related to um, not impairing fundamental rights that relate to the parent-child relationship. Yeah. You know? um, so, um, you know, it, it, it goes on. So you, a question is, okay, you know, the recent states' rights and abortion laws, what's the highest, in what group do the highest percentage of abortions occur, married or unmarried? Unmarried. So, and also if with, that is yeah. somehow inhibited, yeah. then uh, the percentage of abortion goes up or it goes down. If uh, if if more people get married, no, no. If 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 <clears throat> if the percentage if abortion in unmarried people mm -hmm. with unmarried mothers mm -hmm. uh, is not allowed to happen, then then what happens? You have more children born. In unmarried situations, right. right? And then what else do you have? So you have more unmarried fathers, right? Of those right. unmarried children, doing what? See, but but my, my here's paying child support. Yeah, but but <laughs> I would also say too. I mean, I have a different train of thought on this. Uh -huh. If you're talking about what is in the best interest of the child, which yeah. if we're really going to use that, yeah. my definition of the best interest of the child is to be reared in an intact home yes. with both natural and mo natural mother and father. And you're hopefully surrounded by a strong extended family and a, yeah. and a, and a society that supports mm -hmm. the, uh, the idea and the concept of marriage. Right. So anything less than that, yeah. let's not lie and call it the best interest of the child. Right. It's a second, the third, the fourth, the tenth. Yeah. So if somebody came to me and if I were a judge and said, well, I'm, and I'm doing this for the best interest of the child, and so I'm very glad you would say this because mm -hmm. The best interest of the child is to be reared in an intact family with natural mother and father. You guys need to look at getting married. So why don't we have orders that uh, require a Mar parent to be uh, involved in the child's life? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why are uh, possession orders, you know, yeah. you are going to pick this child up at this time. Yeah. You know, you're, here's the designated time. Yeah. Your, you know, equal possession, warranty orders like that. Yeah. You know, the what, what, is, what, is, what are your ideas about the nesting concept? Children stay in the house and the parents move in, back and forth. Oh, I have, I have experienced that, actually. I've okay. even experienced um, a couple that divorced. They stayed together. They uh, remarried, stayed in the same house, and they built extensions onto their house. So they would have both, have, both couples would have their own bedroom. And the children stayed in their own room and they all cohabitated because they wanted an intact family. Yeah. Okay. And they all, you know, got past their previous divorce issues and their previous, and they all get along well, you know, but that takes effort. It's yeah. not a natural process. It takes I, I have not effort. heard that one yet. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. that's, that's I've interesting. I've heard that. So. And actually, I have a neighbor uh, down the street and they went through a, a divorce process and, um, he maintained full custody of both yeah. sons uh -huh. um, and mom you know by the evaluation was to be alienated but he didn't allow that to happen he yeah. re, he re, he he got her he he got the family back together not yeah. married yeah. but they cohabitate she lives upstairs in her own room he lives downstairs yeah. the kids have their own bedrooms and they participate in co-parenting in the same house wow Wow. Yeah. Well, David, I'm going to have to take off here, but it's been a pleasure to talk to you. It's been a you. pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, again, once again, I look forward to, well, I don't know if I look forward with, with hope and expectation or fear and trepidation, but I do wish you the best at the upcoming uh, things that you're going to be going through. Yeah. And it's been a